what i want to ask is basically is about how you look at uh, writing okay what is, is there like a process is there something that you choose in the particular subject what inspires you like you know i just want you like if you have to like put your process out there sure you have spill your secrets out there for people <laughs> how would that be I, i that's a great question see from a writing standpoint for me primarily vishwas uh if it's a movie that i'm writing Uh, I've uh, been lucky to study filmmaking. So, uh, from a writing standpoint, when you're writing a screenplay for a movie versus writing a screenplay for a web series, uh, luckily for me in my career, I've had an opportunity so far to direct films, web series. Uh, I've also directed, um, you know, podcasts or um, audio casts, so to speak. So for me, um, whenever I step into the writing process, it's important what the context is that I'm doing. So, for example, if I'm just take humble politician Nagraj, for instance. we knew that there is this crazy character called nagraj so the film is going to be around nagraj because the title is nagraj or humble right. politician nagraj for that matter so when i embarked on writing the story in the screenplay and obviously the story was written with uh, with danish but the screenplay i wrote on my own uh, the screenplay follows usual act 1 act 2 act 3 structure but when i step into um, you know writing i first write a complete plot outline um, a plot outline say imagine for, in 20 points what would my story be in 20 points right 20 bullet points i put that down and then i start fleshing it out right. um the, every writer has a different process right. my process is i like to first have an overview and then i get into the details right um and then obviously in in, in writing screen writing when there is a movie there are multiple characters this primary secondary tertiary mm-hmm. but the primary and secondary are important or in, in for for nagraj specifically there is one character mm-hmm. what is his arc through the movie mm-hmm. what is happening to him in act 1 act 2 act 3 what is the um, you know the biggest a problem that nagraj has an obstacle and how by the end of the film uh, he as a character is going to uh, deal with this obstacle mm. um i don't want to get too technical but um from a writing standpoint if you are a writer and if you are aspiring to write a movie uh, it's definitely good because now with social media and youtube and stuff you have so many different videos out there to at least learn the basics for me i always believe that art is science mm. and if you approach art scientifically then there is a breakdown to it right and you break it down very methodically uh, very eloquently and smartly mm-hmm. so that when you are writing it and then you from writing when it goes into visual mm-hmm. uh, the, uh, the 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 happiness that you get as a writer mm-hmm. to see what you've written and then convert it into um, you know a, a films a movie theater screen or on your web series in whatever platform it gives you that feeling of okay i had penned this down and now it's taken this shape Right. So yeah, I mean, uh, this is pretty much a larger, uh, shorter answer. But the larger answer would be to get into more details, which I'm sure we can. Correct. You know, one of the biggest things when people ask me questions, usually on social, is like this syndrome. Yeah. Log kya kahenge syndrome? Oh yeah, of course. So basically, how do you approach that? You know, when you're writing a story, are you looking at ki whether the audience is going to like my story, my movie? or are you my i personally what i do is like i write for myself that yes. is that's how i do how how what is your process um i i i never care about lo kya kahenge because the moment you start thinking about that you caught you, you put yourself into a into a bubble Absolutely. and you're never going to be able to come out of that right. uh, i am a mechanical engineer uh, so i studied i okay. did my mechanical engineering and during my mechanical engineering i used to direct stage plays i was a okay. playwright i started really early so i directed my first play when i was 16 and i remember every step of the way my parents every relative was like what is he doing why is he doing this this is not going to do anything and you know he's going to end up wearing fab india kurtas mm-hmm. and <laughs> just be poor mm-hmm. that was the mindset i'm Mechanical. talking about right <laughs> yeah and like you know you got engineering do an engineering degree yeah. the the most com- common sense is to do an mba after that you know but i never listened and and at least person and the kind of person if you make me stand on the road and be like don't cross the road i'm the kind of guy who will cross the road <laughs> and i will actually run right yeah. uh, and i had that mentality from the from the very beginning yeah. and i and i feel like a lot of other people that i've spoken to in my industry yeah. have pushed the envelope right have not just sat and been comfortable right have pushed themselves to be uncomfortable mm-hmm. and in that journey they've discovered themselves mm-hmm. discovered art discovered that by being uncomfortable they've created stuff right which i'm sure you also agree with right. so for me that adage really doesn't work ki log kya kahenge in fact i would be like logo ko kehne de jitna aur kahenge utna aapko aur motivation mile absolutely yeah uh-huh. so uh, you have created a niche for yourself especially with comedy right 
so how do you create comedy this is like the most difficult thing anybody can do in my opinion okay how do you create comedy uh, wow that's a loaded question <laughs> like nachos <laughs> but um, uh, for me i think uh, there's a beautiful line i i heard said it said that fear is a funny thing uh, it makes funny people do fearless things hmm um and i that stuck with me that okay. um you know a lot of uh, you know we all have as artists we have this vulnerability right we are, we are paranoid about stuff mm. and that leads to fear sometimes so mm. uh, even when i was earlier writing uh, different genres and when i even stepped into comedy uh, i i realized that if i have to say something fearlessly i have to look at it from a from a funny perspective mm. so if it's political satire how do i insult someone without insulting them <laughs> for example or how do i make a sarcastic remark where the other person is like oh my god you know he wasn't sarcastic but everyone around knows that it's sarcasm right. you know there are times where uh, if you've been in the airport and you go up and you say is that seat taken mm-hmm. and it's actually free and if i'm sitting on that seat and you come and ask me the seat and if i'm like no my my grandmother is sitting here in a very serious tone and you just walk off <laughs> that means you haven't got the sarcasm <laughs> because there's nobody sitting there right and i used to do that a lot okay like every time when someone ask me a question like for example i'll be like so tell me more about your mother and they be like my mother i'm like no your grandmother's mother <laughs> or i'll just tell your neighbor's mother and they'll be like my neighbor's mother and they would not get it <laughs> and i was like wow this is crazy so then i built up on sarcasm quite a bit right. so my, a lot of what i do uh, even uh, naturally when an actor does a take mm. and they're like how was it and i'm like it was amazing let's do one more okay <laughs> and then but if it's amazing why are we doing one more yeah. and i'd be like it's just the style uh, but, uh, but to create comedy just to answer that in a nutshell would be there is no real set plan vishwas mm. um uh, but uh, tips would be definitely observe a lot mm. uh, read a lot right uh, and not just comedy read about things that are even boring and banal right because from there you might figure out some comedic um you know spark that might come out right uh, a lot of times also there is a naturally inherent sense of humor that people have mm-hmm. um somewhere i think i also had had that from from my childhood days right. and that i think it's just been polished and sharpened i also feel the company that you keep the kind of people that you hang around with yeah. that really helps absolutely uh i have some um, i have some people in my family uh who growing up uh, my uncle especially my dad's uh, younger brother he had this uh, he had this nature of making people feel comfortable and uncomfortable at the same time mm-hmm. and i was like what a gift <laughs> right yeah. so i and i pick, picked up on that mm-hmm. uh and uh, of course watching a lot of uh, jim carrey growing up right um i feel a lot of what we do is inspiration right, right? like tarantino says that you know it's very difficult even if you're copying something you right. have to do a very good job at copying it. right if you are doing a good job at copying it that also can become an original right um, um so i i i would say um, the last point i would definitely take what to make about comedy is that as you mentioned it's serious business and it's tough to do right i actually don't look at it like that mm. i enjoy it yeah i think that is a That's secret sauce important. right yeah. you have to enjoy it exactly so if you're making a character if right. i'm making two characters speak with each other it's right. a boy and a girl right. and they're just flirting Right. And if the girl guy goes up and says to the girl, "What's up?" Mm-hmm. But if he says, "What's up, baby doll?" <laughs> then that changes the tone, right? Right? And how will the girl? And she's like, "I'm not Barbie." She mm-hmm. can respond like that. Right? And she's like, "No, I know, I know, you're not Barbie, but mm-hmm. but you know, I'm pink inside <laughs> by seeing you." So right. many things come out. So I like unpredictability in comedy, right. like how this improv just happened. Right. For me, it's always been about spontaneity. It's always been about unpredictability, and I always mm-hmm. like to to make the audience go. Oh okay what just happened which right. I mean a lot of people are doing today right whether it's any genre not just comedy right this podcast is powered by good work labs good work labs is the world leading tech outsourcing provider so for all your tech and outsourcing requirements log on to goodworklabs.com